Hey everyone, I am Sanket Singh. I am working as a software engineer at Google and welcome back to my channel. So guys, today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic. Uh, I posted a video a few uh, days back where I discussed about my journey, how I went into Google. So uh, today we will discuss not about my journey to Google, but my rejection story at Google as well as at Apple. So most of you might not be aware about the fact that I was also rejected at Google once. So I'll discuss the whole journey about that with you, all of you guys. So this is going to be kind of start of a new series about story time where I'm going to uh, share my stories and experiences with all of you guys. So without any further delay, let's just start. But before starting the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to the channel. And if you find the video interesting enough and motivating enough, do hit the like button to the video and let's just start. <music> So the story goes uh, around in fourth year when I was in kind of seven to eight semester. I was transitioning from seventh to eighth semester. I was applying to a lot of opportunities uh, off campus. Uh, I already had uh, one or two offers, uh, one from Sprinkler, one from Interview Bit, but I was still hustling for even better options. At that point of time, uh, I got to know about the applications of Google Japan. So obviously, for a student here in India, it's a privilege to even interview with such big organizations, and that too for overseas office, not for only India, overseas office. So I uh, came to know about the Google Japan opportunity, and definitely I applied it. I uh, applied with some referrals, right? I got some referrals from LinkedIn. So I applied to the opportunity at uh, Google Japan, and luckily, like I felt extremely lucky because this was the first time when I got a reply back from Google. Not even in my, during my internship days when I used to apply at Google, I never used to get a reply. But this was the first time I got a reply from Google, and I was seriously really excited. Right, so I got a reply from the recruiter that my test has been scheduled for the hiring process, uh, and this and this date and this particular time has been set for the test, and good luck for the test. I was really uh, excited and really enthusiastic about the fact that I will be interviewing for Google. I will be this will be the first time I'll be in the process of Google, but. Uh, I made the first mistake uh, even before the first round, right? So my online test was scheduled. Uh, I still remember it was some Friday. My online test was uh, scheduled at around uh, six uh, in the evening. According to me, it was around six in the evening. But I didn't check my email correctly, and the time that they mentioned was not in IST. It was according to the uh, time in Japan. And I was like totally prepared. I practiced a bit of lead code, a bit of questions from code forces and all, uh, so that I can perform well in the test. But then I realized that oh my god, uh, I just made my biggest mistake probably of the life uh, that I didn't read, didn't read uh, the time zone about uh, in which the time was mentioned. And uh, the moment I realized that this 6 p.m. is not the Indian standard time. I was totally disheartened uh, because uh, I thought that okay, this was the one chance that life gave me, but I screwed it up. But I thought that okay, uh, I I already screwed it up, and there is no turning back now. So how about let's reach out to the recruiter and tell uh, her about the situation. I mentioned her the situation that I missed the test due to this and this circumstances. Uh, can I get one more chance for the test? And trust me, this was the best decision of my life. Uh, the recruiter uh, shared me another testing for another day, and this time I didn't make a mistake. Now this time the test was in early morning, like around 7 uh, a.m. in the morning, 7 8 a.m. in the morning. But I still uh, set up everything perfectly. I gave the test, right? So the test had two questions. I would say medium to hard difficulty questions were there. I was able to solve both of the questions, and I was extremely confident about the fact that I will definitely get a reply for the rounds, uh, the face-to-face -face rounds. It was the time when uh, pandemic already hit uh, the whole world, so obviously the rounds were expected to be online, right? And that's what happened. The recruiter called me and said that, okay, your first round is expected to be scheduled. Can you please share us a bit of timeline and available uh, days and weeks? I shared my whole timeline and uh, there was one more question that they asked. What is your preferable language that you want to code in? I was confident with C++, so I mentioned C++. And then they scheduled my round with one of the uh, engineers at uh, Google Japan. Now the twist here is, I went for the round, I went for the round. Uh, we introduced ourselves, it was a 45 minute round. They gave me like the guy uh, give me give me a very easy question like I already knew how to solve it. Uh, if you'll check out the rating of the question, it will be kind of medium hard kind of a thing. But I already knew how to uh, solve the question. But the catch was I knew how to solve that in Python because in Python there are some inbuilt functions that readily uh, provided most of the tasks and really uh, modified the whole solution to a very crisp and concise solution. And I thought that hey, uh, what's the harm in using Python here? Uh, I totally forget um, forgot about the fact that I mentioned C++ as my preferred language in the form. And now I asked the uh, interviewer that, 
can i code in python i explained in the whole solution he was satisfied he was like he was looking satisfied with the solution and he said yes uh, you can code in python but i guess you have mentioned c++ as your preferred language so i so i told him i i thought that maybe it's not a very big deal i thought i told him that i might be compatible with python for this question so can i go forward he said okay yes please go forward i literally coded the whole solution like 90% of the solution was correct i was missing one uh, edge case the interviewer told me that can you please check out the uh, edge case that you might be missing i checked the edge case and and i uh, coded it well i took my whole time and uh, there were some follow up questions that i also uh, like uh, completely answered and i was confident enough that okay i have banged on the interview i'll definitely get a call no matter what happens i am going to get a call and this assumption was i'm not sure uh, a mistake or a very early decision but after like 3 days or 4 days i got a uh, email from i got an email from the recruiter that okay the position that uh, you were applying to has uh, is now put on hold and we won't be proceeding with your profile for the corresponding role we will reach out to you back as soon as some uh, relevant position is open for you and that was it and this was the moment when i felt like okay i got a chance i screwed up screwed it up once and now i have screwed it up twice so i reached out to the recruiter that can you give me uh, some feedback and all but i didn't get a reply probably they might be also consumed in some of their tasks also so i assumed i assumed that few mistake that i did was like not being serious about the fact that i have chosen one language in the form and, and like i felt uh, really casual about the fact that i can definitely change the language i feel i felt that uh, that is something that was my biggest blunder apart from that i should have taken care of the edge case in one go only instead of uh, To, instead of uh, maintaining the fact that i should solve the question as fast as possible i should have taken like two more minutes and thought of an edge case that could have been better and uh, yeah so i i was able to just think of these two mistakes that i made maybe there can be some more but i was able to th- uh, like think of these two only so what are my takeaways after getting a rejection from google so i realized the fact that uh, the most important thing after getting rejection at any phase of your life is not to stop then and there you should learn about what mistakes you did that's why you got a rejection so what mistake i did i uh, didn't set the right calendar time for my test i was not uh, like looking at the email properly all the details were there but i missed it also i realized the fact that i should be more careful when filling a form that okay i can get something which might not be easily solvable in c++ so like the learning is something that is going to be most important after rejection because using this learning only you are going to improve later that when the life will give you the second chance of doing the same thing you won't miss uh, like repeat the same mistake again this is the most important takeaway the second most important takeaway that i felt was to keep going forward right you should not stop uh, at any phase of your life rejections and acceptance are part of the life but you need to understand the fact that whatever happens in this whole world happens for a good reason you got a rejection because you might not be uh, like prepared for that opportunity at that point of time when you will be prepared enough definitely you will grab that opportunity you will crack that opportunity this is another takeaway that i felt also what i felt was making sure that always you get accepted is not going to work but making sure that the experience that you already that the experience that you got during the whole process or whatever you are like uh, doing in the life the experience matters when i talked to that interviewer and i got to know what he works on when i interacted with the hr i got to know about a lot of culture of google right i got very really good questions to solve this was like the whole experience i prepared for the interview that was the experience that was the journey the journey is the most important part the more you will enjoy the journey the more you will enjoy your destination also so this is also i felt one more take away so these are like this was like my story of uh, why i got rejected at google and let's just resume the journey and let's just see why apple rejected me or why i got rejected at apple so i got rejected uh, at apple like pretty recently so it was 2021 only and uh, the day uh, i was uh, i got an email was my birthday only so on my birthday i got an email from a recruiter from apple that uh, your profile has been shortlisted for an for a position of sre what is sre site reliability engineer at apple so like i came to know about the fact that apple london was hiring uh, a lot and i applied to a lot of positions uh, using referrals uh, some of the position i directly applied so among all those applications my profile got shortlisted for site reliability engineer now i am a software engineer whatever experience i have till now is basically focused towards software engineering but i thought that okay site reliability engineer also has a gray region and it's a really good opportunity to work at apple london so why not give it a shot so i uh, 
read the mail i was really happy and i started preparing i read uh, some lead code articles some glassdoor articles that what apple asked for an sr interview and i also reached out to some people at linkedin that okay what was your experience uh, for an sre interview at apple and uh, the rounds were kind of simple there were like two technical rounds followed by few manager rounds so i went for the technical rounds and in the technical rounds it was like a, a bit different experience uh, it was a one hour round and in the one hour round in the 30 minutes i had to solve three questions three data structures and algorithmic question although i would say this questions were easy medium and all the three questions were connected if you are able to solve the first one the second and the third are already connected so you won't be hustling a lot but solving all of them and actually coding and actually running for a solution like you have to run your code that was a task in itself because 30 minutes you have to be like bang on at your time management but i was able to do it i was able to barely manage around 30 to 35 minutes that interviewer was also strict about the time and the moment i completely solved the question he started asking me questions more relevant to the sre profile questions involving linux as an operating system deployment structures uh, i still remember a question where he said that what is ls as a command what it actually does in the background when you type it in the terminal i answered that okay when you type ls you will get the list of all the files in a directory he said what actually happens behind the picture so he was actually expecting me to explain him the whole process of how exactly a script the bash script runs and similar questions were uh, there which were very in depth at at some point of time i realized that okay the questions are going really really uh, in depth about uh, how exactly operating systems how exactly linux as an operating system and how exactly bash and all works which was not that focused for an sd interview but for an sre interview it totally makes sense uh, after this interview uh, like after two or three days i got a rejection from apple uh, i know it the process was was a bit quick i got uh, rejected in my like the first round only but i realized one thing and the major takeaway uh, from this rejection was if you are expert at something try to explore more on that domain only and if you are exploring a new domain like sre was a new domain completely for me because it was an one year experience sre profile that i applied to so you should be uh, making sure that if the new domain is something that you are definitely not prepared for you can take time like you i might uh, like i was given a chance that i can also reschedule the interview so i could have rescheduled the interview for like 3 to 4 weeks probably and prepared even more uh, so that the question that were there i should not feel like okay these are totally in depth i'm getting a bit scared i'm getting a bit nervous right one more thing that i uh, see as a take away from this interview was i was getting nervous a lot because uh, the questions were something that like i definitely never faced it was not a general operating system based question it was totally in depth uh, about linux specifically and bash spe uh, specifically so i believe you should not get nervous uh, i have faced a similar situation before but at that point of time i used to directly duck the question but i was not doing it this time because maybe it was apple the pressure was really high the stakes were really high so that's why probably i was not doing it but this is again uh, a major take away from my interview experience that uh, you should not get nervous very often also one more thing is whatever are your thoughts whatever are your thoughts at any point of in your life maybe in an interview or whatever task that you are doing you should explain it to the person sitting in front of you as Uh, in a in the best way as possible because i felt that uh, due to that timer thing i was not also explaining whatever i'm writing as the solution of the coding question that was given to me so that is also a major takeaway but what i really enjoyed was apple actually called me back like act, uh, actually apple replied and this is a very 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 big thing for me because apple if you will see as a company don't visit a lot of campuses here in india very very rarely you will see people getting selected at apple london so getting a reply from such a prestigious company was a dream come true and i'm still like really happy about the fact that i was able to get my profile shortlisted when i got rejection from google i was definitely a, a bit more disheartened but i was not that disheartened after getting a rejection at apple because the best part was getting a reply and i was really fascinated about the fact that my resume my profile is something that is noticeable at a company which is of the scale of apple so this was another take away uh, for, for, from my rejection journey at apple and this was it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to uh, drop your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to like the video i will be posting more about my stories some stories of rejection and some more experiences that i got uh, during this whole time i hope that you guys will enjoy it and we will see you really really soon in the next video till then take care guys bye bye have a great week ahead and love you all